I'm Sue Jan James, the Green Left. Thank you for joining us. Those of you who have been following the Voluntary Assisted Dying Bill and its progress through the New South Wales Parliament will know that last Thursday morning it finally became law in New South Wales. Terminally ill people will now have the right to legally and peacefully end their lives of terrible terminal illness and suffering at a time and place of their choosing, surrounded by family and friends as it should be. Joining us today so that we can congratulate them on this historic moment and monumental passage of legislation are two of my favourite guests. First of all, Ms Shane Hickson, who is Vice President of Dying with Dignity New South Wales. Shane, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Suzanne. And also Mr Greg Connell, outstanding advocate for Dying with Dignity, who we've also spoken to at length before and soon to be, I think, former members of the Shooters and Fishers and Farmers Party, Greg. Welcome and thank you. Yeah, thank you. I haven't burned it yet, so yes, still am. <laughs> now, Shane, you personally have been fighting for this reform for nearly 10 years now after the very sad terminal illness and death of your dear mum. How did it feel to be in that room last Thursday morning when it finally became law? It must have just been a stunner of a moment for you, yeah? Yes, it, it definitely was, Suzanne. It, um, luckily, the, the visitors, we got special permission to go into the Legislative Assembly because we weren't allowed into the Legislative Council. So although we were in Parliament House in a room watching on a screen, we weren't actually there, you know, right near the, the um, Members of Parliament when it passed the Upper House. But we um, arrangements were made so that we could, when it moved straight away to the lower house, that we could be there in the public gallery. And it was, it was just so fantastic. And nearly, I think Penny Hackett said in the press conference, it was sort of, um, she didn't know whether it was a, a dream and that she was going to wake up and we'd be back in the upper house because it has been, as you know, a very long journey, not just through this debate, um, but also the, for me, you know, I went through the 2013 bill that Green's MLC Kate Fairman put up. I then, you know, four years later um, was there when and, and lobbied and worked hard on the 2017 bill that failed by one vote. So to reach... Um, to reach this result was a dream come true, obviously, yeah. I'll ask you now, Greg Cottle, how did you feel, mate? I mean, your story with BAD stretches back three generations. And as you've mentioned before, your dear wife, Sarah, is also now quite ill with stage four cancer. How did you feel when you heard the news? It must have been mixed emotions, yeah? Um, yeah, it was, uh, I was actually at work, to tell you the truth, and, and um I actually had, uh, I cried. Um, um, tears of probably joy, anger, frustration. And, you know, like for it to be too late for so many people to use. Um, joy that it actually has passed, you know, and and a, a fair bit of hope, but also a lot of um, um a lot of sadness for people that still have to wait that 18 months. And I mean, that was brought on by my wife who actually said, said to me when I got home, I hope I stay well enough that this is officially in. So it's, I still feel for those people, we have to have that period, but you've got to feel sorry for them and just, just hoping that they uh, have a, uh, as painless a death as they can. Now, Shane, Dying with Dignity has said that they're now going to take up the territory fight to restore territory rights. Um, both the Northern Territory and the ACT have wanted to have voluntary assisted dying for quite some time. And as we know, the um, anomaly in the Federation in the way the territories were set up has allowed people like in the past Kevin Andrews and others to overturn those territory rights. Are you going to, first of all, stay around to help take up the federal fight? And if so, where does it go next? Yes, we'll definitely, not just uh, Penny and I uh, and other board members in New South Wales, but every Dying with Dignity around the country um, has, has committed to supporting the territories. And fortunately, with the change of government uh, on the weekend, that is now very likely. And also not just the cha change to um, the Labor government and with the leader, Anthony Albanese, but also uh, I think the success, I think David Pocock got the second Senate seat in the ACT and he made 
voluntary assisted dying or restoring the territory rights, his key platform in the lead up to the election, promising to bring a bill within the first few weeks. So I think all everything will align and it won't be, um, you know, a huge battle. I think that the um, there are enough independents who, who support it and, um, you know, all the parties, obviously the Greens have done really well uh, and, and we know there's a lot of support in Labor. So I think they'll, they'll definitely have the numbers and so now it's just a matter of who brings forward that private member's bill um, and uh, I'm sure it will get the support. And then, uh, I, I, yeah, I think it'll be pretty straightforward for their legislation as well, both the gov both gov Parliament, sorry, uh, in the ACT and the Northern Territory, I'm sure will move very quickly on voluntary assisted dying laws, and they won't have the same battle that we that we had here in New South Wales. Both ACT and the Territory have had legislation drafted for some time. The ACT got theirs ready to go; they just um, need to get past the technical anomaly anomalies in the Federation. So I look forward to seeing that happen. And what about you, Greg? No one could blame you if you took some time out and didn't want to join the federal fight. Where are you at with it all? Well, I mean, it's 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 pretty positive, as Shane said, with the change of government. Anthony Albanese is on record as, as stating for years that he supported it. Um, look, I've got relatives in Canberra. Um, being originally from Bega, where my father was from, there's a lot of people from the South Coast that live in the ACT. Hell yeah, I'll be there supporting it. Um, it should be it should be right across this country. There should be no one that misses out on the right to have their freedom of choice and. Yeah, but uh, as Shane said, I, I really can't see an issue. I think uh, change of government, wanting to listen to the people, I think it's a shoe in quite frankly. I think it's a win-win for everybody. Look, I can't thank you guys enough for keeping myself and Green Left and all of our viewers and listeners abreast of what's going on with all of this. You must have had the schedule from hell, especially you, Shane, and I know that Greg's been working night shift through it all. So thank you so much. And um, Shane, do you have any final observations or comments you'd like to make? The floor is yours, lady of the moment. <laughs> well, I just, I, one of the things that I reflected on at that press conference was just how fabulous it was to be standing there celebrating with, um, you know, 28 co-sponsors of that legislation. Uh, the, it, it, Alex made history by uh, having 28 co-sponsors, no other legislation in state or federal Parliament has has had that number, and the the just the uh, the atmosphere with that collegial cooperation across all the parties um, was was fabulous. And I think a good example, just with you know, literally within forty eight hours of the election, showed what a strong independent can do. We're working with parliamentary colleagues, even when there was no support from the premier or the leader of the opposition that that group of MPs were able to get this much needed compassionate law reform across the line. And it was, yeah, it was a fabulous moment to see the parliament work that way. I hope, I hope it happens again in the future. Well, what I can gather, Alex Greenwich has got hostage level negotiation skills. Everybody on all sides have spoken very well of him. Um, speaking of MPs in the VAD movement, Greg, we never heard back from Mr Borzak and then he had to hide when there was only one, one amendment to go to block extra time on the floor. How did you feel about that? <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, I, I watched his speech in, in Parliament. Like, uh, yeah, look, Robert who? Um, who really cares what Robert Borzak thinks? He's, you know, like he showed that he's, he's not representative of country New South Wales because he totally ignored emails and messages from his shooters' electorates from Broken Hill and all that. And I have to admit, I, I did listen to I watch a lot of the uh, coverage with Greg Donnelly and all that there. And wasn't it surprising how many times Broken Hill was mentioned? I found that very interesting. Broken Hill was one of the target areas for myself. And uh, I did it on social media through a lot of their sites. And and a massive amount of support out there. Mm. And somehow or other, Broken Hill gets messy, gets used in the parliament. I, I found that very interesting. But um, but really, Robert, who who cares about Robert Borzak? I certainly don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, think that, I think that goes for a lot of people now. We've seen a complete change in the political landscape. And say what you will, will about independents, Greens, other, other shooters and fishers members, it's um, a terrific result for everybody. And I think everybody will see more representation out of the new parliament. 
and I sincerely hope that it goes according to plan for the federalisation of the VAD. And um, I think it's the best shot we're going to get with the makeup of the new parliament. Any final observations, Greg, that you'd like to share with us? I'm just, look, from someone whose father took his life, I'm just, um, that gets emotional. I'm happy that no one will have to go through what my sister and myself had to go through. And um, in that regard, to be able to, to be able to sit there with your loved one at the end and not have them have an horrific death, it is, it's a very good thing, very good thing. That's what it's all about. And that's certainly why most of us support the VAD movement, because we've seen it in our own families and continue to do so. And we know how important it is that people have the compassionate right to safely end their lives at a time and place of their choosing. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Shane Hickson, for everything you've done for the movement, for the time that you're giving myself and Green Left to keep us up to date with this. Thank you so much. Oh, it's a pleasure. And, and no doubt you'll give us a call um, when it when implementation is is over and we're and the law is coming to into effect. I'll look forward to speaking to you again because it's been great to um, uh, keep your you know supporters uh, updated. And Greg, thank you so much for your personal advocacy and your heartfelt speeches and the things you've done on social media. It's been fantastic to see this get across the line. Thank you. Uh, that's you're quite welcome. Thank you both very much. That was Shane Hickson. Vice President of Dying with Dignity New South Wales, and Mr Greg Connell, Dying with Dignity Advocate and Shooters, Fishers and Farmers member, both of whom have helped get the VAD legislation across the line in New South Wales. This is Suzanne Jane for Green Left. We look forward to seeing you all again when VAD becomes law in the territories as well. Mm -hmm.